Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here, and welcome to what will be a refurbishment of a black SX70 Model 2. This camera was sent in to me by a client of mine named Dale from South Australia, and uh, I figured it would be a good little thing to talk about on the channel, because as far as I can remember, I haven't done a black Model 2 yet, and I thought that it would be a nice idea to talk about them. The Model 2, uh, differs from the Model 1 in that it was a cost-reduced version. Uh, what does that mean? Well, basically, all it means is instead of coming out with shiny chrome body panels and tan leather, it came out with black ABS body panels and a brown synthetic leatherette. Now, this camera has been reskinned by Dale already, which is why the skin looks in really, really good condition. Um, generally, you'll find these completely crumbling away into dust, but more on that in a minute. So, does that mean that these are bad cameras, being that they were produced more cheaply than the Chrome ones? Well, no. Not at all, actually. In fact, the main issue with these is simply that synthetic leatherette that crumbles into dust over time. But if you reskin that, well, that completely uh, negates any negatives that you may have from the leather. For all intents and purposes, these are the same performance as an SX70 Model 1 or an Alpha. It has the same lens, same chassis. In fact, the actual chassis and internals actually featured a few improvements comparative to the Model 1, such as some strengthening of certain aspects of the hinges, um, and such as a slightly different ribbon cable design, which is actually more durable on the body of the camera. Now, this camera has been sent to me because when you put film inside, it does this. Now, can anyone at home watching along, feel free to leave a comment, can anyone diagnose what that issue is? I'll give you a further clue. When you try and collapse the camera, it's no longer possible. Well, what's happened is the Model 2 has a motor that sits here, a little plastic drive shaft coupler, which then connects to the gear train, and this is a classic issue for that drive shaft coupler having broken. Um, it's pretty much a guarantee that on any Model 1 or Model 2, or Model 3 SX70 that has that plastic drive shaft coupler, which is basically all of them, unless it's already been refurbished, um, it is a guarantee that this issue will happen eventually. And it is another important reason, and I know I harp on about this a hell of a lot, but every single SX70 that is out there needs to be overhauled if you're gonna get the best result, because things like the drive shaft coupler is very, very common, but even even if we um, look past that little plastic drive shaft coupler, there are going to be things like the, um, uh, the electric eye having corroded, there's lubricant that's likely dried up, there's lots of little bits and pieces that ideally should preemptively be fixed if these cameras are going to give you the best possible results. Now, the reason that I'm choosing to talk about the Model 2, it's very important if you're going to buy one of these, especially if it's been refurbished, Ask the seller what they've done to it, because the amount of these cameras that I see being sold on places like Etsy, eBay, where the seller will go, yeah, it's been, it's been fully refurbished, it's super clean, but all they've done is put new skin on it, is super alarming. Um, Reskinning is not the same, in my opinion, as refurbishing. Really, these things need to be fully overhauled, and unless the camera has been mechanically overhauled, I would avoid buying the camera for any kind of a premium price. If they've stuck leather on it, good on them, it's gonna break. <laughs> like, unless you do stuff to the mechanics on these, uh, doing the leather first is a bit of a waste of time. Now, look, to be fair to the person that owns this camera, this is not exactly common knowledge. That's the entire point of my little YouTube channel, is to educate you guys that there's really no point simply just reskinning a camera when the rest of the camera hasn't been overhauled first. It would be like, I don't know, getting some old barn find car, you know, some 
uh, 1960s E-type Jaguar that sat around under a under a tarp in a barn for you know the last 60 odd years, and you pull it out of the barn, and you just straight up repaint the car, and you don't do anything else to any of the mechanics. Is that a good way to refurbish that car? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 in fact, it's a really stupid way to refurbish it because you haven't done anything to the mechanical side of things. Um, and that's really what I wanted to drive home here. And as I said, this is something that's not exactly common knowledge with these cameras, and that's what I'm here to change. Um, now, the problem with reskinning the camera first is to get this camera open, I need to take the leather off again. And depending on the type of adhesive that the leather uses, that the leather uses, that's either going to be very easy to do, very difficult to do, or basically impossible to do. And I don't know what kind of leather this camera uses. It kind of smells like Hugo Studios leather. Um, and if that's not an indicator that I've been in this business for a long enough time to tell the differences in the leather just by smelling them, then I don't know what is. Um, yeah, I think it's Hugo Studios leather. Um, what I, what I like to do when I take leather off for the first time is I like to just try and peel it a little bit first because the adhesives vary so wildly. Often I use heat with my heat gun to remove leather, but certain adhesives soften up really nicely with heat and they peel off straight away. Other adhesives, that heat is, is going to turn that adhesive into like mush and it's going to make the job way worse. So sometimes you want to do it room temperature, sometimes you want to do it with heat. Certainly what you should never do though is use a chisel and I'd like to reiterate that again. When you use a chisel your risk of taking little nicks and chips out of the camera is very very high. And I can see there's a few little marks on this where a few little nicks have been taken out very likely through chisel use. My guess is when we peel this leather panel off, there's gonna be a lot of scratches. And again, that's not my client's fault. Uh, I, I think in the letter that he supplied, he said, no, it was in a text message to me. I think he refurbishes years ago and years ago there would not have been a good guide on how to reskin the leather. Everyone recommended use a chisel to scrape off the old adhesive. It's one of the worst techniques you can use. A heat gun or a hairdryer will simply peel it straight off. But like I said, I'm not gonna blame anyone for that. My channel's only been out two and a half months. So let's see if I can peel off this leather panel, hopefully without deforming it too much because I would like to recycle this if I can. It would seem a real waste if I couldn't, but yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to because it's it's really stretching and if this is from Hugo Studios this is why I don't like his leather so much because it's it just it doesn't reuse very nicely yeah see it's all even if I try heat like this is the kind of adhesive I don't think it's going to come off very nicely And I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with the color or the finish, but I've just found Hugo Studio products to be very hard to recycle. Aki Asahi, on the other hand, is very, very easy. And, oh, yeah, see the heat, like the heat just makes the adhesive uh, separate, basically. So I think the best way, <laughs> What is this made out of? It's so stretchy. <laughs> oh, ay caramba. Ugh. All right. It's not terrible. I've seen much worse. I think if I use the heat gun, once this leather's on and I try and massage the leather back into shape, I think I'm gonna be able to salvage that pretty nicely. What I am gonna do is just try and uh, put it off to the side where it's not going to touch anything. There we go. And now I can have a look at the rest of the camera. The other thing that I've noticed, there is a crack on the front door here. I'll be messaging Dale that. Um, 
I do have like a spare door from an SX70 Model 3. Uh, I mean, this, this crack isn't going to affect anything. If not, I can maybe attempt to super glue it for him. If that's something that he wants me to do, I can, I can see what he wants. But um, if not, that will need a spare door. Now, one of the other things I like to show you guys, if you can't fold the camera down properly, um, what you want to do, on the side of the camera, there's a little plastic gear train cover, right? What I recommend you do, use a screwdriver for this, just a little flathead, and just get it under there. You can use your fingers, but it's a lot easier to just use a screwdriver. Take that little gear train cover off, and basically, at the rear of the camera, you're gonna notice there's, there's a gear, right? And what you wanna do, when the drive shaft is broken, these gears are very, very loose. So what you might wanna do is just, with a little friction using your index finger, just to keep the gears from going backwards, what you wanna do is you wanna, the, the gear that is the furthest away from, uh, well, the, the gear that is basically the closest to the rear of the camera that you can access with your thumb. You just wanna lightly keep one index finger on the gear because they're loose and you just want to keep pushing towards the rear. So your thumb is pushing towards the rear of the camera. And like I said, what, what I'm doing, I'm constantly stopping the gears with my index finger because otherwise, because the gear train's completely not connected, they, the gears sometimes want to roll backwards. So, and you basically just want to do this until you hear a click. Because what this is doing, this is lowering the mirror inside the camera. And it's going to mean that we can then close it again. There we go, that should have done it. Ta-da! Now, when you put a pack of film in here, it's, it's not gonna be fixed, but at least now, if you had to send it to a technician such as myself, the camera is gonna be closable. But, I mean, to be honest, it's not that important, um, provided that you pack the camera well enough, the camera's gonna survive just fine. So, I've got a few little parts here. I'm gonna put them in my little tray. Uh, we'll pop that there. So yeah, hopefully I can salvage that leather nicely. Um, yeah, I'll see what Dale wants to do in terms of that door. The only spare black doors I have at the moment are from like an SLR 680 or from an SX70 Model 3. So it's not going to have the same logo. All right, now here is the drive shaft, uh, the, the little plastic coupler very small little bits of crystal clear plastic. It goes brittle, straight in the bin it goes. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do, there's little bits of leather at crumb that are inside the body of the camera. Um, I'm just gonna remove those. And that's the thing, when you de-skin a camera without then opening up the insides, there's no way that you can clean the little bits of crumbling leather. First thing I'll probably do, because I've got my drill from the other day where I was recording a video, I'm just gonna remove these rivets and get rid of the metal tongue. Because one of the things that we're gonna do to this is convert it to take 600 film. And if I'm gonna do that, then one of the future upgrade paths may be to then convert the camera to take I-type film. And if you convert the camera to take I-type film, well, um, you're not going to want that tongue in there because that tongue prevents you from inserting I-type film because in a pack of I-type film there's this little plastic lug there and that hits the tongue and gets stuck. It's very inconvenient. So if you remove that tongue while you're inside the camera, um, that's not going to happen. And <laughs> what's funny, there are so many technicians out there and repairers out there that offer i-type conversions on cameras that don't take that tongue out. Like they're rebuilding the entire camera and they leave that in there. I do, like I genuinely can't understand why. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> the only reason that tongue exists is to prevent you from inserting like the wrong pack of film. Um, and I had one just the other day refurbished by Retrospect. They, uh, I believe they put the i-type battery pack on. So the their four AAA battery pack. They even put the matching skin on it. They, they refurbished the camera, converted it to 600 film. Their soldering was also excellent. Like I was very, very impressed with the level of craftsmanship that they put into that camera. 
and they left the tongue in there. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you've literally had it open. It, it takes seconds to drill it out on a Model 1 and a Model 2. And on an Alpha or a Sonar, it's even easier. You just, it, it's, it's metal staked in. You just literally pop it out with a screwdriver and file down the studs. Easy. Anyway, that part's done. It takes literally seconds. Um, I'm going to just take off the body ribbon cable here. So this is what I was talking about. Um, on the Model 2, they went from using a plastic capped on material for the body ribbon cables, and they swapped to a like a waxed paper design. Now you would think that like the waxed paper would be worse because it's made of paper. Um, it's excellent. This stuff does not fail. It is just gorgeous material. I really, really rate it. Um, early capped on like tends to delaminate and fall apart. This is excellent stuff. So this is actually one of those uh, things that Polaroid did, which was actually a real improvement to the design. And it actually makes Model 2s nicer to work on in my humble opinion. So I'm now just gonna take the screws out of the shutter assembly. Um, I haven't tested the shutter assembly yet. I'm gonna assume that it works. Uh, and if not, I've got so many spare PCBs that I can guarantee I'll be able to get it to work. There we go, that screw is really hard to remove. Yeah, I've had a lot of uh, viewers of the channel send in SX70 Model 3s for donation, the non-SLR. Um, watch my video on that if you, if you haven't already. And they have the same PCB. So you can generally tell a Model 2 PCB because they changed the flash fire assembly design a little bit. And the main chip here and the main flash fire assembly are have this little yellow dot, like a little yellow painted dot to signify that they match. Um, oh, whoever sold it in the solenoid at the factory was drunk, weren't they? Look at that, totally crooked. It'll still work, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, that's one of the ways that you can tell. And so basically any PCB with a little yellow dot there on the chip, you can match up. So let's say this PCB was dead, I could easily match it. Um, I'm gonna put this shutter off to the side and I'm gonna focus on the body first because we've got a motor that needs to be refurbished, uh, a drivetrain, um, that needs to be reconnected. So I'll probably just do that first now. now the, the motor sounded to be in fairly decent condition like it was spinning up. I will recondition it anyway, just to make sure that we can get it uh, fully working. Cause the, uh, I'll put an X there on the back so that I know. Um, what was I saying? The, yeah, the copper is quite oxidized on the rotor here. So I'm just gonna put this in my drill, grab myself some sandpaper and uh, just give it a good refurb. And then I'll spray it with a bit of alcohol just to clean it up. It's worth noting, by the way, that uh, I always keep the drill in reverse when doing that. Uh, because it basically, it, it means that the windings won't unravel. If you do it in the forwards direction, you risk doing that and that's not good. All right, uh, next thing I'm gonna do, I've just got my syringe of lubricant a little bit of bearing oil just on the two bearings, just to make sure everything moves a bit smoother. It's just good practice. All right. And then we will reassemble the motor. And I gotta say the motor is the number one thing that my viewers kill. <laughs> I think the kill count is up to about five motors since I've started this channel that viewers have taken apart, copied me, and then mucked up putting it back together. Uh, 
accidentally crushing the carbon brushes, for example, that seems the most common cause of death. So do be careful if you are attempting this at home. Everything that you're going to watch on this channel, like I do make, look relatively easy. Next thing I'm going to do is stretch the drive shaft spring. I stretch it in the middle. I see a lot of people that try and give like a big uniform stretch along the way. You don't need to stretch it just directly in the center. Uh, that way you've got a good amount of material that can grip the shaft and, well, both sides of the drive shaft basically. So I stretch them so that they look like that. It's just a lot easier. Less chance of mucking things up. And ultimately the spring works in exactly the same way. So, all right, let's put this back in. Get the motor over its little engine mounts. If we can, there we go. There we go. And let's feed this back home. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna put the door back on and an empty pack of film and I'm just gonna force start the motor here just to make sure it's all connected. There we go. You guys heard how it sounded before, radically different now. Um, before it was really sluggish, now it is absolutely humming. So uh, let's put that back to the side. I'll put, uh, let's get those shutter screws. I'll just put them in the little lid there. Put the door over here and just continue to take this thing apart, so. I don't expect any of the mirror assembly to be loose because Model 2s were generally made during the period of time where Polaroid was using pretty decent quality mirror silicon. Um, here underneath the bellows we can see all the dust left over from the synthetic leatherette. Um, again, it's just one of those things you're really going to be able to do a much better job of the restoration if you dismantle the camera clean it up before you reskin it. You can always tell when a camera has simply just been reskinned instead of fully overhauled because the second you take those panels off it it shows. Like I'll know. I can generally get a good idea of the history of the camera by uh, looking through it, seeing what's going on. Alrighty, so we've got two little screws. And this is riveted on, so this is one of the areas that they cost reduced. They removed the two screws that held in the bellows and used rivets. So that means we can't take the bellows assembly completely off. We just have to flip it over and onto the front. So that little arm comes off like so. And then I've got my special little tool. And we'll unclip that one. Unclip the other one. Heat gun can go away now. And we'll suss out the internal. So this Fresnel screen is the alpha style one, so we don't need to cut up the rubber tongue. Uh, the viewfinder mirror is incredibly dusty. This is dust from the synthetic leather. So it's, it's clear, it, it gets everywhere basically. Um, we'll check quality of the mirror, that's held in completely fast, so that's really, really good. And so what we can do now is just clean up the mirror assembly. Basically, I'm just gonna brush a whole bunch of dust away from it with my very, very soft brush, because I don't want any big chunks of dust getting where they're not supposed to be, so I like to do that first. And I'm gonna start just with popping the mirror up like so, that allows me to get underneath and clean it all out. It's actually not so bad inside the mirror assembly despite the, uh, the leatherette dust. So I always start with this mirror first and then I can work on the rest. And as I said, the silicon here is all in good condition. So we don't have anything to do there. So I'm just gonna clean the taking mirror. The taking mirror is in very good condition. There's not a single splotch, fungus, mark, other than the dust. 
So that's really good to see. Now one of the things I didn't ask Dale is whether or not he wanted a rule of thirds grid put onto this mirror assembly. So I'm just going to message him now after I clean up the bellows assembly here. Just putting the mirror back down. Click. There we go. And yeah, there's heaps and heaps and heaps of um, crumbly leatherette dust in there. Stacks of it. So I'm just going to clean that now with a cloth. Like, you have no idea how much dust gets into the bellows assembly from that synthetic leather. It just gets everywhere. So we're going to just clean out every little speck of dust. I'm doing this with the bellows on the side, by the way, so that there's less risk of scratching the Fresnel screen. This Fresnel screen already has like a whole bunch of marks on it. Um, probably just from the factory. I don't know why, but you'll often find them with like lots of, they look like cleaning marks, but they can't possibly be because no one's opened up this camera. I haven't touched it yet, so I don't know where these marks are coming from. But you can't really see them in the viewfinder, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just going to get into that bit, into that bit, into that bit too. And of course we can have a, have a bit of an inspection of the bellows. I can't see any holes or anything like that, so these, these look to be in very, very good condition. Overall this camera is in excellent condition, except for... Uh, that drive shaft being smashed. I'm expecting that shutter is gonna work pretty well. I think I'm gonna to need to do very minimal stuff to it. Um, being a Model 2, there's no anti-static layer to take off the blades. So the shutter, I think, is gonna be a pretty straightforward 600 conversion. All right. Just getting all the cleaning marks off the mirror. I think this thing's gonna be pretty easy for me to do. Um, I did get permission from Dale to alter the leather if that bottom panel proves not to be salvageable. Like if I put that back on and it looks like garbage, I'll reskin the entire camera. But if it looks okay, like if it looks passable, and I think it's going to be because when I uh, reapplied the heat gun, the leather really seemed to flatten out. I'm not sure if it's 100% genuine leather. I think it might be some kind of composite of materials. So if it's got some kind of like plastic or PVC layer that will have like a bit of memory when heat is applied, then it may end up going really flat. Uh, so we'll see. All I know is the adhesive is nice and sticky. So I think it's going to go on again without a fight. Now I'm just sanding the two ends of the power switch here. This is a little dangly switch that basically uh, connects two terminals back here to send power around the camera once it's erected. Um, I'm just going to clean up the Fresnel screen and then I'm going to ask Dale. I'm going to, I'm going to cut and ask Dale if he wants a, a grid ruled in. And then you guys will probably cut back to a gridded up camera, which I will then reassemble and have a look at the shutter. But yeah, I quite like the Model 2s. I think the black looks really, really nice. Um, 
And I think that their reputation as like a cost reduced camera is uh, a little bit unfair. It's really just the leatherette that did those, uh, did these cameras a disservice. Um, the black ABS plastic panels actually had a really big advantage over the chrome ones in that ABS plastic is way more flexible. These panels have a lot more give in them. They tend not to snap as much in like the common location on the viewfinder assembly where you're pulling up on it constantly because the extra flexibility helps strengthen this part. Um, actually, I do need to clean under here. Um, the extra flexibility is very, very helpful at preventing these things uh, snapping in the viewfinder. Now, obviously, it can still crack exhibited by the, the front door. Um, however, this was probably due to some kind of drop damage, I imagine. That's looking mighty clean. I am going to cut and ask Dale if he wants the rule of thirds grid, otherwise I can box this up. That mirror silicon is rock solid and tight. The bellows are clean now. The mirrors, all the mirrored surfaces are looking nice. So I'm gonna make a phone call and get back to you in just a second. All right, that was a yes to the grid. So I've gone ahead and installed that. The other thing that I did was swapped out the door panel. Uh, this is from an SX-70 Model 3. Otherwise completely identical to the Model 2 door, except in name. Now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't just swap the logo and well, that's very difficult to do. This little door flap at the front of the camera is held in place with heat stakes. Basically melted little nubs of plastic that hold this panel in place. Removing them is incredibly difficult. Um, whilst it's easy to rip the cover off, the only way that you can really replace the cover again, I have found, is to use very tiny screws. And those screws really have to be filed down so that they're as small as possible. And what I like to do is push them in using a soldering iron so that they melt their own threads. It's a very fiddly job, very time consuming, and simply much easier to swap the entire door. So we've done that. What I'm gonna do now is box up the camera. The other thing that I did was just replace the, um, not replace, clean the viewfinder uh, because the viewfinder had a little bit of dust in it, but honestly, nothing really to write home about. I was actually quite surprised at how clean it was. And that means that, yeah, we're pretty much finishing up, at least with the body of the camera. And then we can pay attention to the shutter. Now, on the shutter on this particular camera, the client is after a uh, just a pure 600 mod. We're not gonna go do anything completely crazy. I am just gonna clean up a bit more on the bellows. Now that I've got the camera flipped over, we can uh, clean the outer portion of that bellows assembly. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just put the screws in to that bellows assembly first, like so. Put one screw in, and that's just going to help those bellows stay in place. Uh, the other screw is here. And then we'll just continue to clean them until they all look speck and span, and then we'll put the viewfinder on, and then we will be done with the body of the SX-70, which as you heard from the motor noise, sounds really good after being refurbished. But yeah, you guys can see the difference, well, and you can hear the difference in terms of performance once a camera has been nicely overhauled. Like you just can't replicate having that performance boost that you get from a nice cleaned out motor and everything else being uh, restored. I'm gonna just lubricate the drive shaft and the posts of the gears just to help everything be nice and smooth. So I'm just using a little medical syringe here to apply my uh, penetrating oil. It's a synthetic oil used to repair watches and things like that. It's made by a brand called Liberty Oil. 
I really like it. I find that it works really, really well. And I always take it out of the applicator that it comes in and I, I put it into these little, uh, what is it, one mil or 10 mil syringes, whatever they are. Yeah, one milliliter, because it just gives you a lot more precision in terms of uh, dropping, dropping the oil into where it's supposed to be. The last thing you want to do is use the applicator it comes with because that's for much bigger jobs. And uh, yeah, you'll end up drowning this thing completely if you're not careful. All right, let's put the door on here and give it a little bit of a test shot. Door is on. And let's get a screwdriver. I'll short the motor and six volts. Wonderful. Now the last thing that I have to do is just get that pick arm to be a little more snappy. So I've got my little brush here. I've got my lithium grease and I'm just going to really paint where that pick arm goes and then take off the excess. Wipe that all off. And yeah, just making sure that pick arm is well lubricated just really helps. All right. Wonderful. Well, that sounds really nice. And that means that we can pay attention to the body. Uh, not to the body, I've just done the body. That means we can pay attention to the shutter. All right. Time to work on the shutter, and to be honest, this thing is in very good condition. There is not a lot that I'm going to do to it other than really give the lens a clean. Uh, this being a Model 2 has no anti-static layer on the shutter blades, and they are snappy as. So that's going to work perfectly fine in terms of automatic exposure. Nothing to alter for those. Uh, one of the things that I will do, though, is just disconnect the flash fire assembly so that we can lift up on the PCB and figure out what kind of capacitor is in there for when it comes to 600 modifying this thing. My guess is that this camera is going to use roughly an 800 picofarad capacitor, and so I'm going to end up replacing it with about a 180 unit, uh, but it's going to depend on just what kind of condition that electric eye is in. If it's particularly crusty, I might go with a smaller value, if it's in really good condition after a clean, then we'll go with the 180. So let's see what we end up with here. Because it's all the luck of the drawer until we open this thing up. And honestly, this eye, I think, is going to clean up really nicely. It's looking very, very clean. There is a few spots of oxidization on the front. But nothing that I don't think should clean straight off. It doesn't look oxidized at all at the rear. Not that I can see. Yeah, this thing is minty. Very, very lucky here. Uh, Dale, your camera is in fantastic optical condition. I'm super stoked with that. So let's figure out what capacitor it has. You can't really tell on these because the black insulation covers everything. Uh, so let's have a look. Let's get the old capacitor out. So I'm just melting all the old solder away and then I'm going to melt back all that black insulation layer off the metallic pad. Just like so. I find this is the easiest way to do it. Just melt it all off. When you heat up that pad, everything tends to come loose. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. That looks like an 800 capacitor if I've ever seen one. But I will just confirm. Let's have a look. But I think a 180 picofarad is going to work absolutely spot on in this thing. You know, I've been very lucky. The last few cameras I've refurbished have all had pretty decent electric eyes. 
uh, or have been just being upgraded to the SX70 RPCV. So I really haven't had to do much capacitor swapping and wrangling for a while. So 700 picofarads, so 700 divided by four. Uh, it is too early for maths. 175, yeah, so a 180 picofarad should work perfectly. Uh, 220, let's have a look. 150, 220, 180, here we go. I just need some scissors to cut them out. Come in little packs of two. There we go, put that back. Let's put the new one in place. Uh, one thing I do need to do though is just drill out the little holes because they're currently covered in insulating material. So I keep around these little PCB drill bits. These things are really life changing um, once I discovered them because sometimes you'll be working on something that requires soldering and like the ground plane to the negative, or whatever, is really, really fat and the solder doesn't want to melt. So if you just drill out the solder hole instead, it works so much easier um, than having to like faff around with wick and desoldering guns and you know, you're trying to melt old solder. Uh, sometimes it just does not want to work. So if you do it that way, it works really nicely. So I love those little 0.75 millimeter PCB drill bits for that very reason. Here we go. So my one leg is in. I'll just cut the other one off. And that's two in. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is just go and resolder every single connection on this PCB. Uh, 181. Yep, that eye is minty fresh. Great. And then, even though the rest of this solder kind of looks okay, I'm just going to reflow it anyway, just so that there are no loose connections. I just think if you're good at soldering, it's good practice to do that. Uh, and then the leg of the electric eye that attaches to the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? To the trace. I like to re-solder that too, because I tend to find it can go dry. Just scraping off the insulation here. Like so. And then I'm just gonna re-solder that main leg on the eye. Great. All right, that looks really good. I'm happy with that. Uh, next thing that I'm gonna do is just clean up the lens. So I'm going to get some, some of the leatherette dust off the back of this. I'll clean the rear of the lens right before it goes on the camera. Um, I will just take the focusing wheel off. Put that to the side. Put the infinity pin back as well as the... The spring doesn't want to come out, so maybe I'll just leave it there. Oh no, here it is. I was going to say, sometimes if they don't want to come out, I like to just put a little bit of blue tack over the top so they can't escape. But yeah, you do not want to lose those little springs. They're very frustrating when you do. 
So I'm just going to take the light dark wheel off, the walking arm off, and I'm just going to make sure... M mainly the main thing I'm going to make sure is just that there's no dust like anywhere on the blades or anything. It really doesn't look like it, but I'm just going to make sure everything's clean just in case. Um, as I said before, the, even the lens looks pretty clean. There is like a little speck of dust in there, so probably what I'll do once I've got this thing taken apart is just take this downstairs where I've got a leaf blower. And I like to just use that to give it a good old gust straight through that lens cell to blow out any large chunks of dust. Um, but certainly the bits in between the lens cells we can clean. Like this one here, we can just take the lens off and yeah, give these elements a good clean. Um, I'll just fish out the aperture blades while I'm here. Like so. And like so. And now we can just check. Yeah, the solenoid looks really good. Uh, as I said, there is that tiny speck of dust. So what I'm gonna do now is just go downstairs, use the leaf blower, and hopefully I can blow that out. If not, I may have to separate the cell. All right, leaf blower worked like a charm. Removed the one chunk of, but there was like a big white chunk of dust. It kind of looked like like, you know how you've been shredding paper or ripping paper and it leaves little white fluffs? It kind of looked like that. It was like a little, like a bit of tissue paper or something. It just wound its way inside the lens and it blew out instantaneously once I hit the corner of the, well, not the corner, but once I hit the little slot on the side of the lens with the nozzle of my leaf blower, it completely removed. So I'm just cleaning the lens cells now. Uh, with a bit of glass cleaner just on my cloth, making sure they look nice, and then I'm just going to reinstall them onto the camera. Uh, let's just make sure there's not a shred of dust. Sometimes this takes a little bit of time. I like to do several passes just to make sure it's totally clean. And uh, yeah, then I'll put this to the side. We'll put the aperture blades back in, which are minty condition, like absolutely as fresh as it gets. So this camera is going to work totally fine. I don't think there's going to be really any need for me to adjust anything on the shutter now that that uh, capacitor has been swapped. So what I'm going to do is just insert these blades back going to take that one here so I put one in the wrong direction first so that it acts as a guide for when I slide through the proper blade okay there we go we'll get that pin under the scissor arm. Here we go. One side working nicely here, and then we'll just slot in the other side. Yeah, these blades are in beautiful condition. All right, in goes the other side. I'll just get that under the scissor arm. And, ta-da! Very nice. Well, now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. Making sure there's no dust on the lens cell before I put it, put it on. Uh, with these Model 2, since they have numbers around the lens, you can generally line it up very easy. Like that will be at infinity, for example. 
So there's no need to then go and recalibrate it. That should be correct, although of course I will double check. Um, I'm now gonna put on the little bits and pieces that I took off. So let's start by putting on the cam follower assembly. So this is the part that dictates what aperture is used for flash when you are doing flash photography. It's a very important part of the camera. It's got a little washer that holds it on. Uh, now I can put the walking arm back on, which was over here. Oh, no. Well, that was a walking arm, but it wasn't the one that came off the camera. They are all the same though, so it doesn't matter. That's the one, and that's held in place with a little, little plastic stud. And then we can line up the light dark wheel and put in the flathead screws. I've said it once and I'll say it again, I don't know why Polaroid insisted on using flathead screws for the light dark wheel. Like every other screw in this camera is a weird proprietary design, except for these. What's the deal? What were they doing? Just using my lube brush to just apply a tiny, just a hint of lithium grease to that flash cam follower, just to smooth out the focusing a little bit. And now lastly, we'll put on the focusing wheel. Oh, no, what am I doing? We need to put in the spring and infinity post. There we go. And now the post, and now the light dark wheel, and now that. Great. Wonderful. Now I'm going to shield where I've modified the capacitor there using a bit of capped on tape just to prevent short circuits at the back on the off chance that that ever happened. Not that it would be particularly common. I apologize for my neighbors and the sounds of yard work, by the way. If you guys can hear that in the background, it sounds like someone's flying around a Cessna, some kind of uh, petrol powered cutting device they're using, chainsaw or a hedge trimmer or something. All right, let's get the body. Let us put this thing back together. I'm just gonna use two screws to hold the shutter in for now. We'll solder on the lead and then it'll be pretty much time for film testing this afternoon once the afternoon sun comes out. I must say, this was a particularly well-behaved SX-70 Model 2. Uh, other than the usual grief from crumbling leatherette dust, it hasn't really given me many troubles. All the usual things needed servicing. But I've certainly seen far worse. All right, let's get that cable on. Now I'm just gonna tack this in place with the hot soldering iron. There should be enough solder just in order to get it to stick. And I'll come back and re-solder it properly. I just wanna confirm that everything works. but it should do. I have no reason to believe that this camera will not function once I put the door on, like so.
Beautiful. That is exactly what I want to see. I'll just check the flash cam. And that's working nicely too. It does need to be adjusted though, because the flash cam is making an aperture that is way too small. Uh, and you'll find that a lot. This, this part that I'm about to show you is often missed by a lot of technicians. And basically what this cam follower does is it connects the light dark wheel and the focusing wheel to this little spring-loaded cam at the bottom of the camera, uh, at the bottom of the, uh, of the assembly. And what happens when you take a flash photo, this secondary solenoid engages, it pushes down on that cam, which butts up against a stopper, causing the aperture blades to develop a certain shape just depending on how the lens is focused. So if it's very close up, it's gonna make a tiny pinhole. If it's sort of further away, the aperture gets bigger. And if you were to take a flash photo at infinity, it's gonna give you basically full F8. But there's a little concentric screw made of plastic at the rear of this assembly, and it, it often needs adjusting. Now this screw is incredibly fragile, so what I recommend you do is using heat, soften it up first. And what I'm trying to look for now is my little 1.5 millimeter screwdriver. And I'm just gonna attempt to turn the screw. Now sometimes parts of the screw will, will just wanna snap and, and there's not a lot that you can do. Like I said, these things use Loctite and the plastic goes very fragile over time. There we go. Now it's turning. So. What you need to do is basically adjust that, that little plastic lug until the flash aperture is opening at the correct distance during a flash exposure. And you figure that out at the, at the closest distance. So the way that you tune a flash cam assembly, you figure out what the aperture shape is at the very closest distance, so 10 inches. And it should look like what I refer to as a tiny aeroplane. Like you should see like a center little shape and then two little bits off to the side. Like it's, it's hard to describe. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'll try to zoom in on the footage. Um, I'll put this focusing wheel on. Get that at infinity. Oh, see how the cams become hooked there? So let me just get that out of the way. Yeah, now it works, okay. Put the little hex nut on. I'll reset the body. And what you wanna do, yeah, focus the lens all the way to the end. On the light dark wheel, push up on the little metal reset tab so that it centers. And with a very bright light, you wanna look through the lens whilst either a flash, which is covered, or my flash tester unit is installed. And I'm just looking at the aperture shapes. So that's way too big, so I need to adjust that now. Make it a touch smaller. Still way too big. And there we go. 
Now it's firing at the correct shape. So the shape kind of looks like a bow tie. That's the best way I can describe it on a Model 2. On a Model 1, it looks like a little aeroplane. On a Model 2, it should look like a bow tie. And it is now. So what I then like to do, I just get some super glue. Uh, I will... <laughs> the thing I don't like about super glue, the lids always have a way of fusing themselves. <laughs> well, once I get the lid off this super glue, I'm going to apply a tiny bit on my pick and just glue the top of that screw on the flash cam assembly so that it can't possibly move. But yeah, this is, this is correct now. Um, basically before it was making an aperture that was way too small and now it's making one that is the correct size. I just have to put the washer on underneath the uh, focusing wheel because I realize I forgot, which is easy enough to do. I'll reset the lens to infinity, put the wheel back on, and uh, yeah, basically once I know that the aperture is the correct shape for the close distance, uh, this is going to work fine. But yeah, it's a very important thing to check, and it's also worth noting that Polaroid had many different revisions of that little eccentric screw, depending on what type of aperture blades that you had and what type of shutter assembly that you had, and it is actually possible for the factory to get the parts confused. There were certainly some production runs where you just physically cannot adjust that screw enough to make a big difference to those aperture blades. And as a result, the flash is never really gonna work properly on those cameras. So um, whenever that happens to a client, and it happened to me the other day, I, a guy had this very early Fairchild camera that did not wanna function properly with a flash. It was just making an aperture that I know would have been way too small and the photos would have been very, very dark. And uh, I had to say to him, I said, look, your flash cam assembly is one of the ones that Polaroid you know, didn't do right from the factory. Do you value flash photography? And he was like, no, I don't even own a flash. But for him, if he wanted correct flash photos with like a mint flash bar, he'd have to set the bar to the lighter side. It's just a thing. But this should be making a bow tie. And once it makes that bow tie, like I said, I'm gonna get the super glue out and uh, make sure that that lug can't change anymore. There we go. Um, but since my lid has glued itself shut, I'm gonna do that off camera, so I'll be back. Well, there we go, guys. I would say that camera is in working order. Perfectly exposed sunny photo and perfectly exposed indoor photo uh, without any flash. Uh, I was able to get the bottom leatherette back on the camera uh, as best as I possibly could. There was still enough adhesive in order to stick it down. And overall, I'm quite happy with the finish. So there you go, one restoration of an SX-70 Model 2. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I will see you in the next one, as always. Uh, if you'd like to support me, links are below to my coffee account if you'd like to make a donation, or simply feel free to send me something to refurbish. Until next video, may all of your instant photographs come out perfectly composed and perfectly exposed, and I'll see you next time.